Hello and welcome to Sophie and Co. Me, Sophie Shevardnadze. Now, as the international diplomatic crisis over NSA surveillance is gaining in scale, the U.S. is scrambling to justify its actions. And while we're waiting to learn what exactly Obama wanted to hear in Angela Merkel's conversations, the question remains: Will the West manage to roll back the mass surveillance, or will it submit to the reality of this one particular Big Brother presence? When friends are spying on friends and trust has been undermined, what can stop the relationship from crumbling? Will Europe forgive the US for sneaking and snooping? Or will they hang up on their overly curious ally? For how much longer will Snowden's revelations keep fanning the flames of the row? And our guest today is the British Labour MEP. Well, it was a really interesting visit, and to be honest, we didn't expect 100% answers when we went to Washington. The whole nature of investigating uh, the Snowden allegations of mass surveillance, of spying, meant that we were very realistic. We didn't expect to get, you know, the definitive answers about what was going on. But we did get some very high-level meetings. We got face-to-face -face meetings uh, with the NSA. We went to the White House and so on. So, you know, we, we went to every major department and we, we began to build up a picture. And one of those uh, build-ups, if you like, was to try and get our concerns across. So the first thing was to get the concerns across. And they were, first of all, that these allegations are really amassing. They are allegations which are taken very seriously in the European Union, first of mass surveillance of EU citizens, then of course the spying allegations, but also um, issues about uh, commercial sensitivity, you know, all of the issues about Google and Yahoo and all of these uh, backdoor um, access issues. So we got those across and then we tried to get some answers on Capitol Hill and so on. But it'd be wrong to say that we got definitive answers back uh, because it's a voluntary process. Uh, but we tried to make some progress. But Claude, did you have, did you, did you come back with anything at all? What are you reporting back to Europe? Because you could, you could get your point of view well, across to America without going to America. Like you could say we're outraged by you spying on us, but are you actually reporting back to Europe with something? What you've got to remember, and I mean, every journalist is asked this, you know, why go to America when they come here? Look, we're having hearings in Brussels and Strasbourg. We are a European Parliament. We have a representation role for 27 countries. Um, we have had dozens of hearings in Brussels and Strasbourg. Many Americans have come to see us, including whistleblowers, by the way. Uh, we've had uh, Jesslyn Raddock, who gave a statement from uh, Edward Snowden, for example. So we've had many Americans give us evidence there. But it would be wrong not to have at least one visit to Washington where people who were not able to give evidence gave evidence uh, where we could interact with some people who had not come to Brussels. So we did that. And it was only for, you know, two or three days. That was important. It was important to get a sense of our concerns to them. And that was also a two-way street. Now, Claude, you know, Claude. most journalists have said to us, well, yeah. Claude. Did the U.S. officials sound Please, convincing? Yeah. Did they try to justify the NSA's activities? Or was it just a one-way monologue from Europe's side? Oh, yes, they did try and justify what they were doing. In fact, we had private meetings um, with the NSA, Homeland Security Department, National Security Council, and there was some justification given. In fact, you will have seen that. Um, we had we had private meetings and then you saw a public statement coming out while we were there uh, from the National Security Agency it's explicitly about uh, the mass surveillance uh, activity and you saw that coming from the NSA and Capitol Hill while we were there um, and the justification given um, w was public it was about um, that this was done on the basis of you know the necessity of anti-terror activity it was done in partnership with EU government so they were they were in fact while we were there starting to rebut many of the allegations um, and that was unusual because my point um, to, to many of the officials that we saw um, was this, that it has taken a long time for the NSA and others to come back on these allegations. Um, there's been a lot of silence, and that was one of my uh, points to them. So there were some uh, rebuttals uh, happening while we were there. 
Okay, here's what you've said recently. Spying has always existed, but friend-on-friend -friend spying is not something that is easily tolerable. America was spying on friends, and it couldn't possibly be terrorism, okay? And there are speculations of purely economic reasons behind the spying. Have you learned the purpose of the spying? Or is it just the official lines that they've given us all along? Well, no, we haven't learned the full truth of this. Um, we have to be open about that. We haven't learned. And, and the, the quotes that you just gave back to me are about particularly the German example. For example, the allegations about Chancellor Merkel. Um, I can speak for my colleagues. We were, we were there with my German parliamentarian colleagues um, from all sorts of political parties um, in the European Parliament who feel that, um, you know, what would be the purpose of espionage on, you know, Chancellor Merkel? I mean, uh, you know, is that for security purposes? Is there any necessity for it? Is there is it proportionate? And I think the view of my colleagues and I on that parliament delegation, you know, I would say the majority of people in the European Union. But do you I think guess, it could be economic no. reasons, and, maybe? Uh, well, look, that's the point about these allegations that if they are disproportionate, if if there is no perceived reason for mass surveillance and that allegation of mass surveillance is proven um, and we're going through a process of trying to figure out what is going on, if that's the case, then you're going to get to a point of commercial sensitivity. And what I mean by that is um, you've got further allegations of uh, mass surveillance, of, of data being taken. Um, from citizens. Now, there are two points here. One is the specific allegations in relation to companies, um, this, this issue of backdoor encryption and so on. There's a second um, problem, a breakdown of trust, which affects um, uh, the, the, the movement of data. That could have commercial implications. So there are, there are two issues here. And if you have a breakdown of trust between the EU and the US on this set of allegations, and we've said this to our counterparts, and we know this is, this is an issue um, between the EU and the US, if you have this breakdown of trust and you don't repair it, then there are commercial implications. But can I tell you something? From what I'm hearing right now, it looks like it really was more of a symbolic visit rather than anything else, just like Europe's reaction to a spying case of this proportion. Well, fine. I mean, it doesn't disturb me that you think that. You know, my feelings are not hurt. If you feel it's symbolic, that's up to you. What I thought it was was a very high-level visit. We got some information. Our realistic expectations were met, and we were realistic. And I'll tell you why we're realistic, because parliaments are not perfect. Uh, democracies are not perfect. Uh, we don't have subpoena powers. We're not a court of law. We can't force people to tell us something they don't want to tell us. But in democracies and parliaments, you try. You try and get the truth. You try and speak to counterparts. These are our allies. So we're there. We're asking the questions. We're asking tough questions. Um, and we're doing that in Brussels and Strasbourg as well. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're legislators. We're not perfect. We're, but we're there to address what we think EU citizens are concerned about. They are definitely, in our view, concerned that mass data transfers have happened because of these allegations. And if these allegations remain unanswered, there is a privacy issue, there's a human rights issue, but there is also a commercial issue. Yeah, I mean, uh, tough questions are great, but I really wonder about the answers. And you said you haven't gotten any tangible answers. Like, I genuinely wonder why would they be spying on Angela yeah, Merkel? I mean, I mean you could... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting you keep asking this, and that's fine. But, you know, this is not a robotic situation. Um, it's a parliamentary inquiry. Now, what I think is happening here is it's a process. I think with the media, with good journalism, uh, with NGOs, with legislators, there is pressure here, genuine pressure building up. This is part of a process. People are watching this process companies, businesses, who don't want to see, you know, encryption breaking down, you know, backdoors into people's mass data affecting business, privacy being, um, you know, something that is an afterthought. Why? Because in the future, if we're going to have commercial transactions, you don't want to see this being broken down. So for human rights reasons and for commercial reasons, people want to see this issue resolved in some way. 
And I think that's why this process probably, in the end, um, will, it will take time, but I think some answers will come through, but it will be a painful and long process. I don't think it's going to be an instant process. Okay, but let's talk about the process a bit then. You know, right after Merkel's reaction, the Spanish government has warned of a potential breakdown of trust with the U.S. Well, okay, but, but so what? You know, it's not like yeah. they're cutting diplomatic ties. Uh, what exactly does that mean, the breakdown of trust? Well, what's happening here is you've got major governments, you've got the Spanish government, while we were there, El Mundo uh, um, uh, had a piece on um, the allegations of, of Spanish citizens having mass surveillance, Germany, you had fr the French situation. I mean, what's happening here is, I mean, these allegations are coming thick and fast, and we understand there will be more allegations. And y you've got here a sort of relentless situation of allegations. And the key point here is that many of these allegations are not having an answer. Now, the situation is, that, as we understand it, is that because it's intelligence issues, um, we're, we're, we understand that we're being told that we can't have a comment coming from the NSC. But while we were there, there were some rebuttals. Now, we're in a situation where, as a parliamentary inquiry, and indeed there are many national inquiries as well, we're not the only one, um, we want to get as much information as possible. At the end of our inquiry, you know, we're not a completely forensic inquiry, but we'll take what information we can get and make some assumptions and make some recommendations. But we think that at the end of the day, those countries, Germany, France, Spain, you mentioned, those countries will have their intelligence services, they will remain sovereign, you know, they do what they want to do. But EU citizens will still ask the question, you know, what, what, what is my government doing to safeguard my privacy? I think that's the question we will have to be able to answer to those citizens. And, and companies and commercial outfits will want to say, look, is our encryption safe? Or are we going to be doing our business uh, in this kind of environment. Um, and I think those two questions are what we are interested in. All right, after the break, will the UK do all it takes to please the United States? And can we trust Obama and NSA activities? Uh, will it be rolled back? Stay tuned. Wealthy British scion Zach Wilson, investment activist. Markets, finance, scandal. Find out what's really happening to the global economy in Kaiser Report on RT. We are not talking the language of war, but I will only react to situations. I have read the reports, but uh, I'm not in a position to... No, I will leave that to the State Department to comment on your latter point. I don't want to say that, yeah. Well, Mr. Kerry, do you have any comments on the document? Uh, no. no comment? Yeah, no comment. Thank you. No more weasel words. When you evade a direct question, be prepared for a chase. When you throw a punch, be ready for a battle. Freedom of speech means little without the freedom to question. On November the 5th, more than 400 cities around the globe are hosting mass rallies for fairness, justice, and freedom. Follow Million Mask March on RT and RT.com. The Olympic torch is on its epic journey to Sochi. 123 days through 2,900 towns and cities of Russia, relayed by 14,000 people for 65,000 kilometers in a record-setting trip by land, air, sea, and outer space, Olympic torch relay on RT and 